Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ming Chen from HKUST. I'm very excited to be here to introduce our work on serverless function orchestration. This is joint work with Ting Jia Wei and Ray Chuan. Okay, so let's start. Um, Service computing with this function as a service model has been increasingly popular in the cloud. It allows users to simply deploy their application as a set of interacting functions and define the events to trigger their execution. So users don't need to manage servers, and it can enjoy the automatic scaling at fine green bidding. Today's service platform usually deploy uh, application as a workflow DG. The DG describes the interaction among its functions. For example, the, the nodes of the DAG represent the functions and the edges rep represent their invocation dependencies. Let's take an example, the image processing workflow. Uh, assuming you have an input image, you will first trigger the pre-processing function and the output of which will be then sent to an image recognition function to get the final results. Um, so here is we do the function around the attrition. Um, so that is, is simply, we, the plan phone simply drive the workflow execution following the function invocation order in this workflow DAG. Well, this approach is effective for the simple cases like this, but it can have three major limitations. The first limitation we observe is that the function oriented orchestration cannot express many complicated workflow patterns as long as the data flow does not exactly follow the function invocation. To show this, let's take an example the MapReduce. Uh, MapReduce is a classic operation in data analytics. Um, in, in MapReduce, as we know, it needs an all-to-all -all data shuffle. That is, each mapper will produce a data for each reducer. So when running MapReduce in today's service platform, we can only trigger the mapper and reduce functions themselves. Existing platform cannot handle such fine-grained data exchange. So as a result, the user typically needs to manually implement the data shuffle, up, 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 data shuffle solutions probably via external storage. The second limitation is the limited usability. Existing sub platform are very hard to use for exchanging data between the functions. You know, service functions are stateless and users can have multiple options to exchange data among them. For example, uh, we can transfer data between the two functions by directly invoking the downstream functions, that is a direct function call. Or we can use orchestrator like AWS stack functions to do the data sharing. Uh, and this can also be done via the message queue or the storage like SQS and the Redis. So here we compare the performance of various data exchange options and the various data sizes. As we can see from this finger, there's no single option can, lead to, can always lead to the best performance. In, for example, when data size is small, um, the direct function call leads to the best performance. When increasing the data size to tens or hundreds of megabytes, using Redis will be better. For very large data like gigabytes, we can only rely on S3. So given that the data volume exchanged in real-world applications can be very dynamic or even unpredictable, it's quite a challenge for users to select the optimal data exchange solutions. Okay, now we talk about third limitation, the limited applicability. We notice that existing function orchestration can lead to a long invocation delay based on our measurement in um, AWS stack functions, it can take over 10 milliseconds to invoke a, a single function instance, so the latency can still build up if we run a, you know, a large function chain. So given that many online services have stringent latency requirements, so the existing service platform is ill suited for running those applications. Okay, in addition, as we have shown in the last finger, um, the, today's third platform has poor performance while exchanging a large, num a large volume of data. This is uh, um, mainly due to the lack of data liquidity. So in summary, today's function orchestration is not applicable to the latency critical and data intensive applications. So now we have uh, discussed the three limitations in today's function orchestration, the limited expressiveness, limited usability, and applicability. So therefore, we propose that the designed function orchestration needs to meet the three good properties. The first is the rich expressiveness. 
That is, the platform should let users easily express a rich side of workflow patterns and allow them to specify like the fine grained data exchange. The second property is the high usability. That is, the platform needs to relieve users from separately handling data exchange in addition to a functional invocation. It would be, it would be good if the, the, the users can do the invocation and data sharing together so that they don't need to pick their own data exchange solution from a, mix, a big mix. The third one is uh, applicability. Um, we need to have the high performance function orchestration to enable both latency critical and data intensive applications. To achieve this goal, we are wondering a question. Uh, the question is why existing solution, the function around data orchestration uh, fall behind. It is neither easy to use nor efficient. Our answer to this question is that it is agnostic to intermediate data. First, the function around orchestration is unaware of how and when the intermediate data are consumed in a workflow so that the developers or the users have no way to specify the fine grain data sharing patterns. Second, it is unaware of data liquidity. They are not designed for fast data sharing. So therefore, uh, our key insight here is that a designed function orchestration should be data-centric. First, we would like to make data consumption explicit so that users can easily specify the fine grain data exchange. And also, we would like to enhance the data locality to enable efficient workflow execution. So following this insight, uh, we propose the data-centric function orchestration. In data-centric function orchestration, we let intermediate data in a workflow to trigger functions. Um, we notice that intermediate data during the workflow execution are typically short-lived and immutable, which means once they are generated, they just wait to be consumed by the downstream functions. So we let them trigger their target function. In particular, we have an abstraction called data bucket. Data bucket is to store and manage intermediate data. The users or the developers can specify the trigger conditions on the data buckets. Um, the conditions like the how and when the data bucket can trigger the downstream functions. So during the execution, uh, the functions can send intermediate objects to our bucket. And once the con trigger conditions met, the data bucket will trigger the target function. Um, a workflow can consist of multiple data buckets, and all the buckets work together to drive the workflow execution. Um, since the intermediate data is typically immutable, so there's no consistent issue. Yeah, following this data-centric design, we have implemented a service platform called Pharomony. Pharomony provides a rich side of trigger primitives to enable a wide range of invocation patterns. We here we compare Pharomony with AWS Stack Functions. Um, as we can see, the common invocation patterns uh, supported in step functions can also be in enabled uh, by the trigger primitives in Faramony, like the sequential execution, the parallel, the assembly invocations. What's more, uh, more complete, uh, the family of system can support the more complete invocation patterns like the MapReduce we introduced earlier. When running MapReduce on a top family, the Map function only needs to send the intermediate data into our bucket. The bucket is specified with a dynamic group trigger primitives, and this allows the bucket to dynamically partition all the intermediate data objects into multiple data groups based on their intended reduce functions. So when all the mapper complete, the bucket will automatically trigger on the reduce functions and let each reducer handle one data group. So you can see in this process, users don't need to implement the other data shuffle here. Uh, okay. In addition to the listed trigger primitives, um, actually we provide an abstract interface in Firmly so that developers can implement their customized trigger primitives based on their own needs. Okay. Okay. In addition to the rich expressives, uh, in Firmly is also designed and implemented to enable high performance function orchestration. Firmly run atop a Kubernetes cluster and it has two components, the coordinator and the workers. So in family, you can see we adopt a two-tier scheduling design, that is the bucket status are distributed across both coordinators and the uh, worker schedulers. In particular, the 
uh, each worker scheduler can track the status of its local buckets and trigger the downstream function whenever the condition is met. So this allows us to invoke function as locally as possible and to reduce the invocation delay. Um, or what's more, if the, the uh, if a workflow running across multiple workers, and the coordinator can gather the bucket status from all the worker, all the relevant workers, and make the and route the next request to the worker with most data objects to enhance the data locality. Another design is that we trade the data durability for fast I/O. Um, you know, in each worker node, we run a shared memory-based object store to cache the intermediate objects in the data buckets. So it allows, that, uh, yeah, it allows the local function executors to efficiently share the intermediate objects with our data copy. Also, we uh, allow the direct data transfer, the direct data exchange between remote functions without going through a remote storage. So of course, if the data needs to be persisted, um, the, uh, the, the, the worker can synchronize with a durable remote, remote store. Okay, as the quick summary, the, um, we have introduced the data-centric design and the family, and this system can meet the design properties we have discussed earlier. Uh, for example, in the first, the, the first property, the risk is present, um, the data-centric design actually, you can see that it breaks the tight coupling between the function locations and the data flow, so that users can actually, in the, uh, can actually express many uh, fine-grained data exchange patterns. And regarding the usability, we actually, by, uh, by letting data trigger function, we unify the interface for both function invocations and the data exchange. So here, users don't need to separately handle the data exchange, which is quite useful. And finally, in terms of actability, um, the data-centric design can expose much fine-grained knowledge of the dependency between data and function, which can leverage to improve the interaction performance. Uh, in fact, in, fa in our system family, we adopt multiple system optimizations to improve, to improve the data quality and enable high performance. Okay, next I'd like to share some experimental results. Uh, we evaluate our system family on an uh, EC2 cluster and we include four uh, service plans from Space Lines, uh, the Cloudburst, and Kinis, which is formerly the Sand. We also include two commercial plans from the uh, AWS Lambda stack functions and the AU Durable functions. We first compare the function interaction performance of these service plan forms. We include three popular interaction patterns. Uh, the first one is uh, function chain, and the second one is uh, parallel invocation, it's like find out, and the third one is fan in. The sample invocations we also vary the degree of fan out and fan in. So as we can see from the finger, our system family can significantly outperform other sort of platforms regarding, uh, regardless uh, the the, the uh, interaction patterns. And in particular, for uh, in, in family, it takes only 40 microseconds to locally invoke a warm instance, which is 10 times better than its closest baseline cloud burst. We also evaluate Faramony using MapReduce sort. We have built a MapReduce framework top Faramony, which we call Faramony MR. Uh, this is can easily enabled by the trigger parameters we have discussed earlier. And we compare Faramony MR with the Paran. Paran is a data, pro, a data processing, data analytics framework built at top Lambda. So we, as we can see, uh, Faramony MR only needs about 500 lines of code, and it can easily enable both map and reduce operations. And thanks to family, the user don't need to have manu manually handle the data shuffle here. Um, in comparison, the parallel needs about 6,000 uh, lines of code, and it only supports map operations. So if we want to run MapReduce on parallel, we need to manually shuffle the intermediate data between the map and the, and the reduced stages. Actually, we, we, we run a Redis cluster to, to facilitate the data shuffle here. We also compare the performance of the two framework when they, sh when they shuffle 10 gigabytes in the media data. For each case, we break down the end-to-end -end latency into the compute and I.O. and the interaction overhead. 
and the number here indicates that later the interaction overhead. So for and for Pyron, the interaction overhead needs to be further break down into the function invocation and the I/O of intermediate data because we manually shuffle the data via Redis. So as we can see, um, the compare with Pyron, our system, our framework, family MR can significantly reduce overhead and achieve the end-to-end -end latency improvement by up to 1.6 times. The credit here is actually to the underlying service platform that is compared with Lambda. Our system family can not only simplify the development of the MapReduce framework that is reduced engineering effort, but can also deliver a high performance. Okay, uh, let's have a summary. Uh, so I present, we present the family, which is a service platform can support, which can support the data-centric function abstraction. It has three group properties. Uh, they can deliver the rich expressiveness, allow users to easily express a rich side of workflow patterns, and it can support fun grain data exchange. And it can also ensure high speed usability. Well, users don't need to manually handle the data exchange. It, it can also it can, uh, be done together with the function invocation using a unified interface. And uh, finally, the, uh, the data center design the family can deliver high performance for both uh, latency critical and data intense applications. That is, it makes service computing applicable to the uh, data critical and data intensive applications. Uh, we have open source family and feel free to check it out. Uh, thank you. That's all. Thank you, all speakers.